And you are on the platform, and we are now <laughs> getting into Free Speech Friday. Sorry, I was miles away. Um, brought to you, of course, by the Free Speech Unions, the, the Union, the Champions of Free Speech in New Zealand. Um, and if you want to learn more about their work, or you've got an issue about your freedom of speech, uh, visit FSU. Uh, it's dot org dot nz. FSU, uh, Free Speech Union of New Zealand, who bring us Free Speech Fridays. With us today, me old mate from Dunners, Mark Champion, and Leo Malloy, who is um, weathering the storms of outrageous fortune. Leo, I have been, because I'm not in Auckland, unaware of these new, what, alcohol special Auckland booze laws you've got up there. Yes, it's interesting situation unfolding there. I'm not entirely sure whether I'm for it or against it. I like to think people can act responsibly based on their own good judgment and experience, but the council up here seems to want to help them make a decision. No more wholesale liquor outlets after nine o'clock at night, so no mm. what the police call preloading and then reloading when you run out of your preload and don't want to pay retail for a beer. So, so, I get it. so no off-licenses, we call them, or bottle shops after nine o'clock? Apparently so, and no embargo on no new ones being established for the next two years. So it's going kind to of, change. Good for you. Slightly. Good for you, it'll Leo. Take, yeah, I think the point is it'll take a wee bit of the work away from the police, and if we're trying to reallocate their resources, it's probably important that we give them one less thing to worry about in that area there, then they can focus more on the other area over here, which may well be downtown crime, you would hope so. All right. Mark, when was the last time you went, went out to get booze after 9 p.m.? Well, it's been a while since I've been to Leo's place. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, I just, I must have been, I, okay, now that I know what it is, Leo, um, I just don't go out and buy booze that late at night, and I wouldn't. And so I don't care because it doesn't Im impact me, to be honest, not in my backyard. But talking of alcohol and controversies over alcohol, chaps, we are later here in the studio in Wellington. Ben and I are going to do a beer tasting. Of the Coupe IPA from Tiaro <laughs> Breweries, um, we've got a whole we've got a whole fridge of it now that is chilling away very very nicely. If you ever wanted a story that encapsulates the madness of our time, Mark, isn't it the Advertising Standards Authority banning a beer because it might offend someone? Yeah, that's disappointing, isn't it? Because that um, raises all sorts of questions about their ability to um, to make um, judgments about things that really matter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're charged with with, with an, applying advertising standards that to stop illegal or harmful advertising, right? Um, there's nothing illegal or harmful about this. This, for all the world, Leo, looks like a couple of Māori got upset because they couldn't clip the ticket on this commercial enterprise. It does seem rather extreme, I've got to say, and I'm wondering where they sit with Seoul because I, I could easily add an R in front of Seoul and most people in New Zealand would resonate with it and be triggered by it. Um, the other one is Corona. Uh, there's many other examples too. Tui, for example, where your famous beer from the Manga Tanoka. Yeah. I don't really understand the logic of it. I mean, it's going well, to coupe time, escarpment Pinot Noir. Um, I don't think Coupe would have particularly cared himself, would he? Well, we're not sure that he actually existed as a person. I had someone who rang me and wanted to come on the show who said they were a direct descendant, pulled out of the interview at the last minute because I may have been asking asking questions about the proof of their anti antecedents. But, Mark, it seems to me almost that the Advertising Standards Authority and Hilary Suter, who runs it, is a person with a great sense of humour and I think level-headed. They've kind of missed the boat that it's not 2022 anymore. And this yeah, well, I also think I yeah. also think that um, it, it's not Hillary that makes the judgments. It's the it's the uh, it's the panel. Yeah. Um, and and I think that uh, that kind of um, softness, that lack of resolution about issues that uh, um, aren't likely to offend um, uh, many people, raises questions about more serious stuff like the advertisements or at least the um, the wraparounds and the Herald. And if it goes before the Advertising Standards Authority, uh, where does free speech stand um, in that? And, and that's what I'm more concerned about. Yeah, also, it's a bit like the Streisand effect, Leo, as it was for Hobson's Pledge, right? Mm -hmm. um, everyone knows about Coupe Beer and Tiaro Breweries now, don't they? 
Yes, yeah, that's a very good point, actually. But uh, I haven't pers- personally tried the beer. Have you tried it? Is it no, a, we're going to literally... Ben and I, we've got it chilling in the fridge. We're about quarter to nine this morning because we're having a pre-Father's Day special show. We're going to taste the beer and see if it turns us into KKK members. Oh, there we go. You've got to report back. Look, I also just want to talk... We... we uh, we're learning this morning that Darlene Tana wants to go back to being called he, she, her, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that the whole yeah. thing was a troll of the Labour Party. Mark, I've got to say, the woman's growing on me. Yeah, look, I, uh, I, um, I thought the, the tease was, um, are the media going to obey me? And sure enough, they did. Um, everyone moved to they. We didn't. Um, not at the platform. She. No, ag- except your news items, of course. Yeah. Um, and I just think that this is wonderful tease. I mean, it would, Winston would have been proud of that one. Yeah. Leo, what do you reckon? I reckon that's a great troll by, by here. Well, I had a little read of it this, <clears throat> this morning, and interestingly enough, it was in front of Simon Moore, who likes to be referred to as Morsey at the Northern Club. And it, it wasn't actually Darlene Tana who said she wanted to be referred to as her or she. Oh, was her white lawyer? Was, who was her white lawyer? It was Sharon Green. It was Sharon Green, her oh, lawyer, God. who said that we're moving on. So she fell for it too. Darlene was just yes. conning everyone. <laughs> as Darlene has done to date and as Darlene most certainly will continue uh, actually, to Actually, that's a very good point. Yeah. It's not yeah. actually yeah. out of character being a bit dodge. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> look, uh, let's look broader at that quickly. I talked to Bryce Edwards this morning. He said it's pretty clear some sort of deal's been done behind closed doors. I do not like, Mark, people doing deals behind closed doors when it comes to representation in Parliament. Well, they were in a jam, weren't they? Um, and look, we've all, we've, we've all seen deals. I mean, David Seymour was the result of a deal. Um, so I don't have any particular issue with it, as long as it's resolved and um, the bleeding continues for the Greens. Yeah, yeah. Um, Leo, do you think we'll ever know? That, well, she's obviously going to stay by the looks of it. What do they say is a metaphor about when things go wrong in the circus, they bring out the clowns to distract the audience, and we've never seen a clown yep. brought out and used to this degree or this extent before. It's like a festering sore on the Green Party, but as you know, I'm no particular fan of the Green Party, and if this is a symptom, think about what the cause is. That entire party is rotten to yep. the core. By the way, that hearing was only it's a substantive hearing in two weeks' time, according to what Simon Moore, the way he's quoted in the paper this morning. The so action may well will be, be withdrawn. They'll do the deal, and then it's given them two weeks to the, sort it out. That looks like something of that nature is evolving, yeah. yeah, which would tend to suggest the members did not vote for the Walker jumping and vote, yeah. um, the invoking yeah. of that law, so, which is interesting right. in itself. Yeah. Guys, I just want to circle back a little bit to this thing about the advertising and the coupe beer. Um, this mail out, you may have caught this story that came and went quite quickly, but generated a bit of heat in Wellington. A group called Better Wellington, which are basically some yep. of the people behind Boise, our mate Boise, and some of the people behind trying to organise the parliamentary protest, I think there are some anti-vaxxers in there, and this guy, Glenn Inwood, who used to work for the Japanese for whaling and stuff, they're running a... And it's, God, it's, it's definitely needed. They are running a campaign just to change Wellington's local governance. The posties in Wellington refuse to deliver the mail out because they think it's disinformation or it's got one line in it about the call to prayer. I interviewed the union guy and he basically said, fair cop, we're just being utterly political. And Wellington's mayor comes out and says, good on the posties. I was actually really outraged by that. I I thought, Leo, the bloody posties should stick to their lane. I oh, absolutely totally agree, but what you're seeing here is a manifestation of what we're seeing right across the globe. When Keir Starmer up in the UK is not allowing people who happen to be opposed to the levels of immigration they're being exposed to up there, when he effectively has those people arrested and lets serious offenders out of jail to make room for the people that are being arrested for putting a Facebook post up that someone found offensive. So it's just more of the same. The people are trying to... There's a group, a progressive group of politically minded people who are trying to channel the way the rest of us can and can't think to the degree that we're made, well, in this case here, they're abusing their power to make sure we don't have access to information. I saw Boise on telly, by the way, came across rather well. Um, yeah. But we're not getting access to relevant information, so what really is, it's a stifling of free speech and the the, um, the right to critically assent, isn't it, or dissent? Yeah, it does feel like that. I thought that might 
have changed, but this censorious inquisition it seems to be buried or have got buried quite deep in our culture, Mark. Yeah, it has, but I do think that slowly the rocks are being turned over. 